Hi folks, it's Peter Elgar Photography here. I'm going to show you this time, as a request from a subscriber, a rather expensive box. Now what's this box, you'd ask? What does it do? There's a hole there. It's black at the other end. What do you fit onto this expensive looking box? In fact, it's the Hasselblad, made in Sweden and it takes German lenses. This is the famous Hasselblad camera. Now there's loads of videos on YouTube but somebody wanted me to do one so we'll see if we can show you a few things about this rather expensive box. So now we've got a lens and the light will go through the lens through the expensive box onto the black bit at the end. So what do you put on the black bit at the end. Well you put a film and the film is housed in a film container like this. And the beauty of the Hasselblad is you can get several of these film containers, expensive of course, and they take different sized images. This one takes square photographs. Now if we pull the dark slide Oh, that's lucky, there was no film inside. There you can see the square shape that it takes. Um, if I look down and get another expensive, rather expensive thingy, I can pull the dark slide, and this time it takes oblong. That takes 16 frames on a 120 roll of film. So you can have 12 shots and you can have 16 shots. So we put it back on, it clips on with two little prongs at the bottom here, goes into two little holes like that and you gently pull this little lever so it goes on. Don't push it, don't just push it on, that's bad for it. So how do you look into the camera to take pictures? Well, you look into the ground glass viewfinder here because it is a single lens reflex camera. So you can say, well, that, that's a bit difficult looking into this like this. Good God, how can you see things? Well, Hasselblad provided you with some viewfinders, and this is a standard waist level viewfinder, which slides on like that. You pull a little release lever and it pops up. Now you can look into this little chimney thingy and you can compose your photographs with the help of a magnifier which you push up here. Oh, here's a little lever here, loads of little levers, there's the magnifier. You can look into there and you can turn the focusing knob or turn the focusing on the lens rather and when you snap it's nice and sharply composed you press the release, and if you've got a film loaded in the back, it takes a picture. There's no film on that because I just took it off. But what happens when you take a picture, wind it on again, the black bit at the end is a, another shutter which covers the film and, until the shutter goes on in the lens. It opens and it takes a picture. Now. That's the action of the shutter at the rear. There we are, you, it's, you can see the lens. And when I let my finger off, the shutter closes to cover up the film. One of the things is, if you have a slow shutter speed, put it on half a second, you've got to allow time for this rear shutter to operate. If you don't, you won't get any pictures. That's another thing to remember. So we press it gently, now it's open for half a second and the rear shutter has had time to come down. Now if you want to put on a oblong film back and you want to take a vertical photograph, you can't go around looking into the viewfinder like this, it's very very difficult. You can slide this off and you can fit on another viewfinder. Yeah. I was lucky 
to have this viewfinder which came with my set which I bought at great expense. I'll take this off first, take the protective cover. I bought in 2002 all this. Here we have, there we are. Then you can fit on a 16 on back and it takes vertical photographs. Here we are. You look through here and then you can take vertical pictures have, having wound it on because you can't see anything if it's not wound on. Now you can easily compose up in your viewfinder a vertical photograph. That's the prism for, for vertical pictures. Now other lenses I've got include a wide angle and a telephoto or long focus. This is the 80mm um, planar T-star made in Germany by Carl Zeiss and you have to take, press a little button here to get it off. We'll take the lens off the box and we'll put another lens on which is this rather expensive beauty. Luckily when I was working it was tax deductible. Now I'm gainfully unemployed. I don't um, get any work but I've, it's paid for since 2002. Now this is the distagon. Oops! Must remember, I forgot to tell you, these have little uh, catches at the bottom here and you must never, as I almost did, fit a lens without winding the spring. That is one of the mistakes I've almost made in trying to show you things. I forgot that all my lenses need to be wound on first. So we'll take a coin and we'll see if we can wind it, wind it around like this. Here we are. Wind the spring. Oops. Wind the spring. Ah, like that. Now it's safe to assemble onto the camera. There's so many things you've got to remember with Hasselblad so that you can easily break it and things get expensive. So now you've got to make certain the shutter's wound. Yes. Make certain the lens spring is wound. Red dot to red dot. Now we, we have a 50 millimeter Vistagon. Now the beauty of this is a CFI lens. The beauty of this Distagon is that it will correct aberrations if you're doing close-up photography. It has here a little scale and you can f put a little distance against that mark. So if you want, if you're photographing four, four meters away, you put against four meters on there. If you come closer, say one and a 1.2 meters, you put it to 1.2 meters on that scale. So if you're doing photography with this particular CFI lens, you focus your subject. And so if we are down to four meters away on the focusing scale here, you turn this until it matches with four meters on the front scale. What happens, it moves the elements inside the lens to compensate for aberrations so that the lens will give you good definition at close-up range. So if you're photographing down a half a meter on the distance scale here, you focus up at half a meter, yeah, that's 0.5 of a meter, then you turn this one until it says half a meter there, and all the elements have now moved inside to compensate for that distance that you're focused on. So that you get sharper pictures. Now how do I rate these lenses? I've taken some pictures which I can show you and unfortunately I don't reckon I've got such good lenses with this set as I see in the Hasselblad forum magazine I used to get. Now um, I used to get that regularly but that went broke so nobody gets it anymore but when you look in the Hasselblad forum magazine there's got this exquisite sharpness I don't seem to be able to get with my lenses for some reason. I take all the precautions 
I um, always use a tripod when possible, fast shutter speed, a flash, etc, etc. But quite honestly, the 2.8 planar here, I don't think it's any sharper than the 2.8 lens on my Mamiya. Now I've got one other lens here, which I bought, which was a 180mm sonar. And once again, if I put the expensive box down, um, we've got to wind on the lens before we attach it to the camera. Wind it round. There we are, it's all safe now. And then we can now attach it to the camera. Now this is a very heavy lens, it's all made of metal. There's nothing plastic about hassle blades. Is it wound on? Yeah, it's all wound on. You've got to remember everything. When you're in a hurry, you have to have an underpaid assistant to do all these things for you. And then the chief photographer comes up and presses the release and gets a thousand pounds for taking a picture. And the poor old assistant who's done all the work will be lucky if he gets 20. Well, that's the 180 millimeter f4. Now, I won a competition, I won enough money to get a rather expensive lens hood. So I've got a Hasselblad lens hood for that now. That was 50 quid, that bit of plastic. But anyway, it cost me nothing because I won the money for it in a competition. It also fits the 2.8 planar because I haven't got lens hood for the 2.8 planar, but it will fit. And luckily enough, I find on most occasions I use the 2.8 planar, it will work with that lens hood. So now you might ask, well, what about filters? Yes, well, have you seen the price of Hasselblad filters? Frightening. I have here some Russian filters, which I've shown you on my video on the Russian MTO 500 mirror lens. You can just hold a filter over the lens and take the picture and it does the job. And it's saved buying out huge expensive Hasselblad filters when the Russian ones do just as good. I've got a red one. I've done some really good work with that with landscapes, holding the filter over the lens like that. You might just as well save you a lot of money. And then you might ask, well, if you want to focus closer, this one only focuses down, it's 180, to um, 1 metre 55 centimetres. Well, like all other cameras, you can fit an extension ring. And when I went to Hong Kong, I bought an extension ring. Oh, must remember, put the expensive box down. No, I'm going to wind it on. Oh, can't find a coin. Would you believe it? Get another coin out. Here we are. Wind on the little extension ring spring. So it's all safe. Don't make any rather expensive mess ups. Then we bane it on the extension ring. Com C, Com Sa. Then we bane it on the other lens you wish to use, make sure it's all wound on. Now, this lens will now focus much closer because I've got an extension ring on. And I've done some quite good work with that. So, how do you load a film? Now, loading the film is done. You've got to open the back. Make, I must make certain I don't pick up the one with film loaded. <laughs> I think this is all right. You unscrew a little screw here, a little tab, and then I've got a, I've got a test film. See if I can show you how to load the film in a Hasselblad. Again, if this was David Bailey, he would have an underpaid assistant to do this. It's got to go backwards over the roller. That's got in like that. That's right. Here we have. You pull it out. Let's round this way. Underneath a little little spring here, which you you raise up, make certain the backing paper goes under this little spring. I've got my glasses on, I can't see what I'm doing in. That's better. Let me bring it round. Put my glasses down. 
and we tuck it into the roller here, the take up spool. You see if we can do this. I've done it once for the purpose of demonstration, but not easy to do it when you're standing up. Here we are, let's tuck, let's tuck the lead of that test film. This has been used so many times, this test film, so that um, it's a bit worn out. And we'll tuck that in there. Ah, then you turn this little knob here, and then the film starts rotating around. Here we are. Now you've got to watch on here, there's a little start mark. You watch for the start mark on the roll film. There we are. There's a little black mark, and it's opposite the start mark. Now, this is a Kodak film. If it was an a, a Ilford film, you would put the start mark to a, another little red place here, for, especially for Ilford films for some reason. But you put that to the start mark, then you turn this little key on the side, that clamp, clamps it down there. And then we pick up, I've dropped, if we can fit that in there, look, look at the shape, follow the shape, that goes in there. Turn the key here, make sure it's pushed in properly. Yes, turn the key and flat. Then you wind the little handle, here we are, about a year later, it might stop. Here we are, it stopped. And it says number one. So we're on number one now. Now you can pull the dark slide. Oh, load and behold, there's some film in there. Two and a quarter square. That's number one. Now, even the dark slide has a certain way of putting it in. There's a little thing here, and you've got to make certain you put that in the right way round, otherwise you can't get it out again when it's in the camera. You've got to put it in so that these bumps face towards the front of the camera. Oh, here we are. Put it in there, like that. So that there's a certain way that the... No, the dark slide, there we are, the bump to put it in the wrong way, see? The dark slide goes in so that it folds over that way. Then it will go on the camera back the right way round. There's loads of things to remember if you've got these expensive hassle blades, unfortunately. They're not a camera that you can rush. Now, I'll, I'll show you some results quickly. No use waffling on if you don't see any pictures. Well, here we have, these are all hand done prints. Look, there's a guy with his horse. Now, the beauty of the Hasselblad is got between the lens shutter, which synchronizes with flash at all speeds. You can see some flash on his face there. And that is filled in the harsh shadows. That's with the 50 millimeter. That's not, not bad for sharpness, but I still don't think it's as good as my Mamiya. Now, here's another one. A cat that has taken f2.8 full aperture on the lens. The black cat with surrounds. It's the sh sharpness is not bad on the fur. That's full. That's on a tripod as well. 2.8. Yeah, it's even being a bit closer. The Guardian, I call that one. I've got another print of that which didn't do very well at the camera club. I never win anything now. You can't beat the digital fakers. Here's a sepia tone one, taken at Blist Hill in Shropshire, and I see it be tone. That's with a that's with a sun pack flash bounced. That's with the that's with the standard. And here's a a weird one taken in the woods in Brentwood with a 180 millimeter lens. It looks like a bird. I thought that branch here. Yeah, that's the one. There's an eye there. Uh, with a 180mm lens and a wide aperture to put the background out of focus and I sepia toned it. There's another sepia tone one here. That's a, that's a wooden sculpture taken in Thornton Park, Brentwood with a 180mm lens. The judge says it, oh, it's too dark here, far too dark. Well, I did have a little bit of weak flash on it but still didn't do any good. Yes, not good enough I'm afraid. There's one with my 16 on back. That's our pond in our town, Brentwood. Colour print that's done on the famous Agfa Ultra 50 film. 
Another one on Ag for Ultra. This was in Whitby. And here we have um, taken with the 50mm lens. That is sharp right from there. I stopped it down real, but almost to the distance. Again, that was on 50 ASA film. The last one I'll show you is me. Me and my Hasselblad. There we are. That's a self-portrait taken on the steps at Whitby with out-of-date film, Orbo film, developed in Pro Micro, which I did myself, and it's a 16 by 12 inch black and white print. The shadow of me with my Hasselblad. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the quick rundown. As I say, my presentations are not as slick as those from the Americans, but the poor old bloody British, we, we can't do it everything as good as the Americans, can we? Thanks for watching.